So, um, Devika, why did you decide to do a genetic nutrition testing for ICAN? What was the predominant reason? See, I go to this pediatrician and they recommend me uh, food, food stuff to eat. Uh, but more or less, I am very confused of what to give him because they all give me conflicting foods to eat when I go to the emergency one and to my normal pediatrician. Like last week, I went for uh, because he was unwell and I asked her whether I could give, her, give him banana. And I understand that banana is not supposed to be given when you have cold. But the pediatric, uh, you know, the pediatric uh, doctor at uh, the emergency said that we can give, give banana. So also, when I was talking to Suhasini, who is the pediatric nutritionist for nutrition, she recommended the genetic test to let me know whether what kind of food stuff that I can give him at this small child. You know, in terms of uh, the protein, carbs and fat percentage, which can be perfected right away uh, rather than later. And, uh, you know, it also gives me uh, the input of a lifetime. So I can use it. I can. So you don't feel lifetime. that spending 30,000 rupees on a genetic test is expensive? No, I don't think it is expensive because when you see that it is 30,000 rupees over what value that you get over a lifetime, it's actually extremely cheap. Uh, overall, let's look at it this way. It is 30,000 now. It might be very, very expensive tomorrow. So it's much more cheaper than doing it today than doing it later. So ask me, as a pediatric nutritionist, uh, what takeaways will you get from the genetic test? See, uh, the genetic test is going to tell me uh, what ICON is going to have to eat in terms of the vitamins and going to have to eat in terms of his diet and uh, like you all know a genetic test is a one time test it's not going to change today he's seven months of age it's not going to change when he becomes seven years so it's all about what he has to eat and what are his requirements now this genetic test tells me his vitamin profile which means it tells me his vitamin B, D's and A's how are they in his body genetically? Is it going to be high? Is it going to be enough? Or is it going to be less? So if I know at the age of 7 months that his vitamin B, for example, is going to be a little low, I make sure that his diet has adequate amount of vitamin B's coming in, not only today but throughout his lifetime. Similarly, it also tells me about his, um, you know, for the mother's point of view, it tells him about the brain performance, the memory, the reading and all of that, about the type of exercise that he is going to benefit from genetically. So if the mom knows that he is going to be good with cardiac, I mean uh, with the aerobic exercises, then she is going to make sure she puts him into a sport which has such kind of a uh, training routine. Don't you feel it's too early at 7 months to do the gene testing? Why is it too early? It is not really because it's a one time test. I can, I'd rather know in the beginning of everything rather know it later on. Uh, when I am not able, able, going to be able to change it. Like I believe that what you teach your child today is what he is going to implement later on. At the age of 5, if you do this test, your child is going to be the last person to eat what you ask him to eat. Uh, you know he is 7 months old and he has already started to eat solids. So I think it's the right time to know, you know what kind of solids that he is going to eat. So we have the right balance in terms of uh, carbs, proteins and fat right from the beginning rather than know it later. So in that sense, it makes it easier for him to form a habit now so that it's, his, it's in his lifestyle. Okay.